Module 2 will discuss design information coordination. We'll discuss the first steps you should take when you start a payment design. The first step is to review the project scope of services. You need to know what is being done in the project before you can go collect data for it. The best place to get a copy of your project scope of services is from the department project manager. Making contact with your PM will allow you the opportunity to talk to them about any specific elements related to your project that they may already be aware of. They could probably also provide you with contact information for other offices that you'll need to coordinate with. Once you have your scope of services, you'll want to find out a few key things such as the project type. Is it resurfacing or is it new construction? Find out the payment type that's been selected for this project. Is it flexible or rigid or both? And another thing you should look for is whether the scope calls for any cross-slope correction. This may be something that's identified after the scoping of a project once survey data is collected, but it's sometimes included in the scope too. So now that you're familiar with the scope of your project, it's time to start gathering as much existing data as you can. A good place to start is with your district maintenance office. They can give you a great deal of insight into your project. Since they maintain these facilities over the years, they're familiar with any problem areas that might be within your project limits. They can give you information on where failures have occurred, how often they've occurred, and what they've done to repair them. This is all critical information for the payment design, so we can make sure to address any issues with our construction project. The District Materials Office should be involved to determine the availability of suitable materials in the construction area and other special conditions that may exist. The geotechnical engineer should provide the estimated seasonal high groundwater data, which may impact your resilient modulus value. The District Materials Office can also provide recommendations with respect to stabilizing, milling, cross-slope correction, and existing payment condition. Additional coordination on project field reviews and data collection might be needed. The latest payment evaluation coring and condition data can be obtained from the District Materials Office. Before you go out and look at your project in the field, you'll also need to know a little bit more about what's being proposed. You'll need to contact your district design office to get the proposed typical section, and as many details as possible about widening locations or anything of that nature. The proposed typical section package should have most everything you'll need, including the design speed, limits of any speed changes within the project, and the overall project limits. Now that you've completed your in-office review of your project, you're ready to go into the field to see the existing conditions. The most important thing you as the pavement engineer will want to look for in the field is existing conditions of the pavement. Look for areas of cracking or rutting, areas that have been patched, short stretches that have been recently resurfaced. Review turning areas to see if there are any issues with shoving. If this is happening, you would typically see it at intersections or median openings where there's a lot of traffic that's slowing down and turning. Document any of these areas by milepost if possible, or at least by taking measurements from cross streets or driveways. Also be sure to note which lane the deficiency is located in. Also take pictures and note where they were taken and in which direction they're looking. Once you get back to your office, it may be difficult to determine which picture of the road was taken in which location. Finally, you probably want to follow back up with the construction and maintenance offices to discuss the existing conditions and any appropriate treatments that could be made in design. Now that you've gone out and looked at your project, it's time to request some more data. For resurfacing projects, you'll need to request a payment evaluation, coring, and condition report from your district materials office. This report request will prompt the district materials office to review the existing pavement and install pavement cores throughout the project limits. This information is extremely important in the design for resurfacing as it will identify the existing layers and the condition of each of those layers. The resilient modulus data is something you'll need for your project regardless of whether it's a resurfacing project or a new construction or reconstruction project. The way we obtain the resilient modulus is different depending on the type of project. If you'll remember from Module 1, we noted that there is a difference between a lab resilient modulus value and a field resilient modulus value. So for new construction or reconstruction projects, typically your geotechnical engineer will collect soil samples of the material that will be under your proposed roadway base. They'll take the samples to the State Materials Office, where the staff there will perform the laboratory testing on the samples to determine the resilient modulus value of the in situ soils. For resurfacing projects, you'll need to coordinate with the State Materials Office to schedule the field data collection. 
the SMO staff will go out and collect deflection data using their falling weight deflectometer, or FWD. There may be some instances where it's not feasible to collect FWD data, so another tool may be used, and that's the FWD dashboard, which is a database of historic FWD data that's been collected statewide. You should be able to find nearby FWD data that can be used for your project. In general, you should use historical data that's been collected within the most recent five-year period, and as always, engineering judgment must be exercised with this method. Also, if you're working on an off-system project, the options for obtaining resilient modulus values are slightly different than the options for state roads. Our state materials office is the only lab in the state that performs the resilient modulus laboratory test. Due to workload limitations, we can only test samples for on-system projects. Likewise, the field crews that perform the FWD field data collection and analysis must be committed to on-system projects. So for those reasons, here are the recommendations for getting resilient modulus values for off-system roads. For new construction or reconstruction, you can collect soil samples for LBR testing and then convert those values to resilient modulus values using the method in the Flexible Payment Design Manual, section 5.2.4. You should also compare these values to those found in the FWD dashboard for verification. For resurfacing projects, if it's not practical to obtain deflection data through the historic database and a design resilient modulus or LBR value is available, you should coordinate with the state pavement office and we can assist with the conversion of the design resilient modulus value or LBR value to a field resilient modulus value. In addition to making sure you're getting all the field data for your project, you also need to look up performance data and adjacent project data. The Payment Condition Survey, or PCS, will give you the performance information for your project over several years. You can see when the road was under construction and then how many years it took for it to deteriorate. The Overlap Report will tell you if there's any overlap of project milepost limits for different FPIDs that are in the work program. So to find the Overlap Report, start on the Pavement Management Office's SharePoint page. If you're logged into the DOT network, you can access it through the website listed here. From here, you'll click on the Reports and then select Interactive Online Reports. And then on the next screen, you can select Miscellaneous Information. And as you can see in the bulleted list next to this blue selection box, the Overlap Report is the first report type listed here. So clicking on Miscellaneous Information, you'll come to another screen where you'll again select Overlap Report. So click on that and then it will bring you to this screen. And on this screen, you can select your district, number of overlap years you'd like to search, and which system you want to look at, arterial, interstate, toll roads, or turnpike. Once you make your selections here, just click on Run Query and you'll get your results. This is what the results will look like. Just for an example, I searched for District 1 arterial roads with an overlap of three years. The results are showing us that there are five instances where two different projects are in the work program with overlapping mileposts. We can see all of the relevant information about each project as it pertains to where it's located and how much overlap distance there actually is. As you can see here, the largest overlap distance we see on this particular query is only about a tenth of a mile, so nothing alarming here. If we see an overlap distance of around a half mile or more, we really need to start digging deeper and see what's going on in our project limits. The next step in your project coordination efforts should be to talk to your district personnel. The district construction office should be involved to determine if there is any specific information that needs to be included in the plans, such as special construction details or issues that need to be addressed with regard to constructability and construction time. Some of these items may include base type, stabilization, temporary traffic control plans, construction time, and so on. The district planning office will provide the current and future traffic data, including the projected easels. This office will also be aware of any planned developments that may be coming during the design life of the facility. An example would be something like a shopping mall or a movie theater that would generate a lot more trips at some point in the future. Talking to the planning office will help explain whatever traffic data you find in the easel report. This concludes Module 2, Design Information Coordination.